Many years ago, there was a young woman named Agnes. And Agnes had an experience where God came to her and spoke and said, Agnes, I want you to help the people of the world, specifically the people of Calcutta. And so she gathered others around her and they began to minister to the poor and the needy in Calcutta. And eventually their work would expand and grow to the point where she received national media attention and uh, won a Nobel Peace Prize. Her name, of course, was Mother Teresa. And we would go on to venerate her as a saint after her death. But she always understood where she fit in God's story. She would just say, I'm just a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. Now today we're looking at another saint, Saint Mary, the mother of Jesus, the one who bared, uh, bore God into the world. And we should venerate and honor her. But maybe, just maybe, she's not that special after all. Maybe she's no different than any of the rest of us. So today we're going to be thinking about Mary and her place in the story of Jesus. I'm Jay Voorhees, pastor of the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, and the Lord be with you. This is Prime, the online service of prayer and praise for and from the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, located in Madison, Tennessee. This service is for December the 20th, 2020, the fourth Sunday in Advent. Let us pray together. Holy Christ, light of the world, the day is almost here when we celebrate your coming into the world. May we who worship you be filled with joy and never fail to proclaim that the light shines in the darkness. Amen. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. And the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing For the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king There's a tumult of joy or the wonderful birth For the virgin's sweet boy is the Lord of the earth High the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng. I we shout to the lovely evangel they bring and we greet in his cradle our savior and king the prophet isaiah foretold of the one to come who would bring forth god's peace a child is born to us a son is given to us and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness, now and forever. We light this fourth candle as a symbol of Christ, the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O God, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. Rejoice! 
rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Welcome to the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, a faith community dedicated to growing in our love of God and love of neighbor. For over 170 years, our church has been a presence in Madison, Tennessee, helping people connect to God and showing the love of Christ in all sorts of ways. We invite anyone seeking meaning and purpose in their life to join us as we work together to walk in the way of Jesus. During the COVID epidemic, we've worked hard to balance the need to gather together with the responsibility we have to keep one another safe. Given the recent uptick in the number of infections, we have chosen to suspend in-person worship through the rest of 2020 or until the infection rate in our city shows a significant decline. While we aren't gathering together on Sunday mornings, the work of City Road Chapel continues on, both online and through Ministries of Mercy. Our prime worship experience is shared on YouTube every Saturday evening, and the Walking in the Way podcast is published every Tuesday or Wednesday. We will be having a special Advent study using YouTube and Zoom on Wednesday evenings, and every Tuesday, members of our church gather online for sharing and prayer. We also share God's love with the homeless in our community through our Showers of Blessing and Feast Community Meals, and we minister to children and their families through our three-star rated Child Development Center. We encourage you to visit our website to find out more about all of our ministries at www.cityroadchapel.org. Our work is dependent on the generosity of our members and the community. If you would like to make a donation to the work of the City Road Chapel United Methodist Church, please visit our website at cityroadchapel.org slash give. All donations are tax deductible. We hope and pray that you find meaning in today's service, and we pray God's blessings on you in the weeks to come. Friends, I want to take just a minute to make a personal invitation to have you join us on Christmas Eve for our special service of worship on YouTube. Because of the COVID outbreak, we're not able to have in-person worship on Christmas Eve, but we will be holding a service live from the City Road Chapel Sanctuary on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. And it'll be streaming out live on YouTube. We want you to invite your family and your friends to gather around and join us on Christmas Eve as we celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. We hope you'll join us. I look forward to seeing you that night. May God be with you. Our scripture for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen? since I haven't had sexual relations with a man. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. And then the angel left her. Take a moment to meditate on this story. 
What do you hear God saying to you today? So this week, this fourth Sunday in Advent, we look at the story of Mary as it relates to the story of Jesus. And our biblical reading today focused on the coming of the angel to Mary to announce that God had chosen her. It's an event we call the Annunciation. And in thinking about this, I began to look over some sermons that I'd written or that others had written along the way, and I, I discovered that we often spend a lot of time talking about the faithfulness of Mary that I would remark on how God used this teenage girl to bring Christ into the world and, and the risk that God must have taken in choosing Mary. And very often, we would focus on Mary's faithfulness, uh, really in contrast to that of her relative Zechariah. I mean, Zechariah was a rabbi. He should have been ready to hear that the Messiah was coming, but instead he doubted God. And it was this teenage girl, Mary, who responds to God when the announcement is made. But I think if we're not careful in these sermons, we can kind of miss the point. As I've read this passage in Luke, I believe that it's really easy for us to miss the point of Mary in the story completely. And I think we need to spend some time thinking about who is actually working or who is actually acting in this story. Now understand, I am not taking anything away from Mary and what she did and what she represents. Mary deserves a place of honor in Christendom for her role in bringing forth the light of the world. And she was and is a saint, an important figure in carrying forth the message of Jesus in the world. But I'm afraid that if we focus too much on Mary's actions, we miss the most important thing, what God is doing in this story. Because, you see, Mary really wasn't that different from any of the rest of us. As we read the story, we learn that Mary was as scared of the angel as any of us would have been. That Mary was troubled by what the angel told her. That she even questioned how she could become pregnant. Mary, like all of us, has valid questions to ask God about how this all can be happening. And she isn't afraid to challenge Gabriel, the angel, with this message that he's given her. It's important to look closely at what Gabriel tells her. Yes, she has been blessed by God, but it's not through anything that she has done. Now, God is the primary actor in this drama. God is the one who initiates the relationship. God is the one who's going to send the Spirit to impregnate her. God is the one that has the power to make all of this happen, whether Mary does anything or not. God doesn't even ask Mary if she's faithful or not. That doesn't really matter in this story. God is carrying out God's desires. And Mary can either come quietly or try to run away from God kicking and screaming. To quote Mother Teresa again, Mary is simply a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. The miracle of Mary is found in her willingness to go along with this audacious plan of God's. But make no mistake, it is God who is bringing this all to fruition. I think the danger in focusing too much on Mary is that we can easily fall into the trap of thinking that our relationship with God is dependent on our faithfulness, on our ability to hear God, on our performance in the face of difficult circumstances. When Mary becomes the center of attention, we can easily fall into a works righteousness which places our faith in our determination and grit rather than the one who creates us and sustains us and redeems us. The story becomes one 
focused on us rather than focused on God. And my fear is when we allow that to happen, we become more like Zachariah than we do Mary. I think what Mary and Mother Teresa both understood is that the most important task in faithfully responding to God is getting out of the way and letting God work. Yes, we have a responsibility to love others. Yes, we're called to move out of our comfort zones and offer Christ. But we are simply agents of a God who needs us less than we need him. It is God who is at work in the story of Christmas. It is God who is engaged in redeeming the world. It is God who offers grace beyond all measure, allowing us to experience love, joy, hope, and peace. Our job, like Mary's, is to simply say, whatever you want, God, is fine with me. And I think when we are finally able to take that step, we begin to experience the miracle of Christmas firsthand. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in this special and holy week. Amen. stood hard as iron, water like a stoner. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago, our God heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain him. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim from the air, but his mother. So we've reached the end of our time together, and before we go, I want to share a couple of announcements with you. First of all, just a quick reminder about the Christmas Eve service live on YouTube from the City Road Chapel Sanctuary, 8 o'clock Christmas Eve. We hope that you'll be there and tune in and uh, participate as you're able. Also, um, next Sunday, we're going to have a special service featuring our bishop, Bishop William McAlilly, and uh, he and the district superintendents are putting together a service that we're going to share on our YouTube channel. And so for worship next Sunday, you get to enjoy our bishop and uh, some of the other leaders in our church. As we move into our prayer time, I want to lift up uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, 
I hope that you'll keep our Child Development Center program in your prayers. Um, we have had a, a pretty significant outbreak among teachers uh, of the program that has forced us to shut down through at least the holidays. Uh, nobody is, is critically ill, but we have some folks that have been pretty sick and they could definitely use your prayers. And so if you would uh, keep that whole program in your prayers, that would be great. Also, we know uh, from the shower ministry that we have that there are still a lot of folks on the streets. Let's just keep them in our prayers as well because uh, the holiday season is a really difficult time. And of course, I think everybody um, has learned that Miss Evie Gooch Foster uh, passed last week. We had her service um, the, on Wednesday and we want to keep Jim and Martha Love and all the family in our prayers. Of course, there are a number of things we need to be praying for. So I hope that you'll pay attention as the situations that we're aware of scroll by on the screen right now. Let us pray. Lord of us all, we come this Sunday with anticipation, for in just a few days we will celebrate the coming of the Prince of Peace. In the midst of these troubled times, help us who follow in your way to be agents of shalom, working for the wholeness and redemption of all. Help us to remember that this is a season focused on grace and love. Calm our hearts and help us to hear your voice. Lord, we watch with dismay as the COVID epidemic spirals out of control. We confess that we're tired, tired of masks, tired of distancing, tired of not being able to live as we once did. We are in exile, living in a land we don't recognize, but we know that you are always with us, holding us as we weep beside the waters of Babylon and offering the continued promise of hope to come. We thank you for giving us the knowledge to address this disease, and we ask you to fill us with patience in the midst of confusion. Lord, be with those who are suffering today, with those in the hospital struggling to breathe. Be with those who have no place of their own to lay their heads. Be with those who are filled with grief and despair during this holiday season. Be with the children of our city who don't have enough to eat and are seeking love and acceptance wherever they can find it. May we, your people, never forget that we're called to love one another in whatever way that we can. Jesus, we come before you today remembering that you took the form of a servant, humbling yourself to the point of death, so that all the world might be redeemed and light would shine in the darkness. It's in your honor that we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May God hold you in the 
palm of hand.